Launched in May 2014, the J3 was LG's strongest effort against Samsung's Android dominance at the time. An impressive upgrade over its predecessor, it was a competent device with a bustling spec sheet and a clever understated design. Now for all the great things going on about it, the J3 was not without its flaws. Thus, the LG G4 was born, a smartphone that's considerably closer to accomplishing the company's true ambitions. The G4 does contain all the necessary innovations to keep LG in the business, but it couldn't address each of its predecessor's shortcomings. Thus, choosing between the two, especially since the G3 is being discounted nowadays, might prove a little harder for some. Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena here, and you're watching our video comparison between the LG G4 and the LG G3. The LG G4 doesn't look much different than the LG G3. That's unless you go with a leather back. It's also taller, wider, thicker, and heavier. If for some reason you weren't happy how the LG G3 looked and felt, then you probably won't be thrilled with the LG G4 either. It boasts the same general design characteristics, but with a few minor changes. Sharper lines and a subtle arch to the G4's body shake up the design in its own peculiar way and possibly makes the phone fit more naturally in one's hand. However, the G3 is still a little bit more comfortable to hold and operate with one hand because it has a smaller footprint. And though you can pick up the G4 in a vegetable tan genuine leather finish, both the phones are predominantly plastic. It's still nice that they have removable back panels that grant us access to their replaceable batteries and micro SD card slots. Overall, LG did try to make the G4 its best designed smartphone to date, but unless you really fall for the genuine leather look, it's difficult to discern the G4 as decidedly more attractive than the G3. Rather than outgunning the competition with an even higher res display, LG chose to stick with a Quad HD resolution and spend its time and money on improving its IPS LCD technology. The result is what LG calls a quantum display, and though, although it's not perfect, it's still better to look at than the LG G3 in some ways. Now, for better or worse, the G4 favors a cold 8,000 Kelvin color temperature, whereas the 7,099 Kelvin color temperature of the G3 provides a somewhat more natural look in reality, which is closer to the ideal reference value of 6,500 Kelvin. As for the brightness properties, the G3 and G4 reach essentially the same maximum brightness levels of 455 nits. Ultimately though, the main thing going for the G4's display is the abundant color saturation and its better viewing angles. Both the G3 and its successor run Android Lollipop, although the G4 is launching with a more recent version. That aside, what you'll get out of these two phones hardly compares to the understated look and feel of stock Android. The G3 layers LG's user experience 3.0 on top of the operating system, while the G4 is upgraded to the newer LG user experience 4.0. Now we find the differences between the two to be purely cosmetic, as you get out of the G4 is basically the LG G3's interface with a new coat of paint. Say for an incredible camera app, the LG G4's user interface doesn't contain any new exclusive functionality of particular importance. With its Snapdragon 808 chipset, the G4 keeps up with Quad HD resolution much better than the G3 could with last year's Snapdragon 801. While the 808 is inherently less powerful than say the 810, it still outperforms the G3's 32-bit base quad-core 2.3 GHz Snapdragon 801 chip. The situation with the chipsets as graphics processing units is similar too. Performance estimates tout the Adreno 418 GPU as 20% faster than, this, than the Adreno 330 GPU. To sum it all up, the G4 isn't as fast as other high-end devices you can buy today, but it's optimized well and it's noticeably quicker and more reliable than its predecessor. Out of the box, the G3 is absolutely fine for general purposes, but it isn't really the big bad gaming machine we wanted it to be and it's prone to lagging under intense load. So upgrading to the LG G4 on the basis of performance gains is certainly justifiable. In place of the G3's 13 megapixel camera, the G4 sports a brand new 16 megapixel sensor with a 16:9 aspect ratio. The camera boasts a sizable bag of tricks, like a wide f1.8 six element aperture lens, three axis optical image stabilization, a laser autofocus, LED flash, and a brand new color spectrum sensor that automatically adjusts white balance. The G3 meanwhile doesn't quite stand up to such an imposing feature set, 
but still an impressive performer with its 13 megapixel sensor and tighter f2.4 aperture lens. Moving on to the software side of things, the new improved camera app is among the G4's most important additions. It offers, it offers a decent mixture of shooting modes such as panoramic, dual, and auto, while the G3 is deliberately limited to automatic mode. Now, the new manual mode of the G4 in particular lets photography enthusiasts adjust white balance, focus, exposure compensation, ISO, and even shutter speed. So how does the image quality fare between the two? Taking a closer look at the photo samples we shot with the phones, one will surely notice the increased detail in the G4's photos across all lighting conditions. Now that makes sense considering it's rocking a bigger 16 megapixel camera sensor. The G4 takes reasonably natural, natural looking photos with a tad more warmth and saturation compared to the G3's images. Add to that, the integrated color spectrum sensor gives the G4's camera an edge in color reproduction. Under low light, the G4 generally opts for a faster shutter speed, which reduces the chance of motion blur occurring in the image. In comparison, the G3 goes for slower shutter speed, which results in an increased chance of motion blur. Regardless, low light images from the G3 still tend to come off smeary up close due to the heavy handed noise filtering. You could certainly expect better detail out of the G4's camera, as its noise filtering doesn't give photos that painted brush look. One area in which the G3 still tends to do better is its camera flash performance, since it's rocking a dual toned LED flash as opposed to the G4 single one. Now the G4's superiority in photography is evident and expected, but what about video quality? With the G3, 1080p video is mostly fine, unless you don't like its camera's general color preferences. Under low lighting conditions, the G4 is able to keep digital noise at bay, but the expense of doing that is evident in the soft details it produces, which, again, is a common, it's common with all smartphones right now. Likewise, the G3 exhibits the same problems as the G4. While LG spent some time retooling the gallery app, the music player on the other hand doesn't see any notable changes, so it's unchanged from before. Essentially, the visual presentation and function of the LG music player is the same, which favors a conventional approach to its styling. As for the volume output, the G4 achieves a maximum output of 79 decibels, which is an achievement that's one of the loudest, but still a little bit below the G3's mark of 81 decibels. In both cases, there's plenty of volume to propel music far into small and larger spaces. Even the sound is pretty flat, unless you tweak the equalizer. With both smartphones packing quad HD displays, experiencing anything on them is a visual feast, but their true potency is experienced by watching videos. The G4 is decidedly more vibrant at that, but the G3 doesn't disappoint either, offering an equally sharp but more honest representation of the material. Call quality with the G4 for the most part is unchanged from what we experienced last year with the G3. It gets the job done, as the earpiece and speakerphone produce strong volumes to make them usable in noisy environments. However, there's a slight hint of distortion to voices through the earpiece. The LG G3 is still a fine handset to make calls with, since loudness is pretty decent on the incoming side, while voices tend to sound clear and easy to comprehend. Battery life is the one truly important aspect where the G4 failed to deliver the expected improvement over its predecessor. Now, both phones pack the same 3000 mAh battery capacities. In our battery benchmark tests though, the G4's battery life reached a mark of six hours and six minutes, finishing right behind its predecessor's mark of six hours and 14 minutes. Meanwhile, the battery charging time remains almost the same too. It takes approximately 127 minutes and 120 minutes for the G4 and G3 respectively to charge the batteries from zero to full using their bundled chargers. Beyond doubt, the G4 offers a significantly better experience than the G3 in the crucial camera and performance departments. The rest it has to offer over its older sibling though won't make you as enthusiastic about it. All things considered, it's up to you to decide whether the leather back, slightly better gaming performance, and superb cameras justify the G4's higher price tag. Now, if you're an LG G3 owner and you're generally happy with the smartphone, we think you won't be missing out on anything incredibly special if you decide to hold on to it for another year. But we gotta acknowledge that the performance and camera improvements in the G4 will be tempting for avid gamers and photographers.